Right, good morning everyone. Thank you very much. Um, we have the wonderful Halida from JP Morgan Chase talking about machine learning. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is... Hi everyone. How about this? Can you hear me well? It's okay. Um, my name is Halida and I work at JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan is an investment firm, but we actually have <coughs> thousands and thousands of technologists, and there's an am amazing, supportive, collaborative culture in technology. So if you're a Python developer and looking for roles, we're always hiring. <coughs> Come speak to us at our stand or find me in the conference. Um, today I'll be talking about machine learning at a very basic level. So if you've done machine learning before, this will be boring for you. But if you haven't, I think you're going to leave the room having learned the basics of machine learning and feeling like you can give it a go at your own time. Um, I'll spend a couple of minutes introducing the project first. So in the meantime, if you could go to this GitHub link and just clone the repo so you have the code and you can run it with me at the same time, that would be great. I'm trying to make this talk as interactive as possible to keep things interesting. So it's github.com slash Halida Bay slash PyCon 2018. <coughs> All right, so the main objective of this workshop is to categorize tweets using natural language processing. We are going to look at thousands of tweets and identify each as being relevant or not relevant for the police to respond to. I just want to take a minute to think about this and really appreciate the power that, the, that machine learning will give us. If we didn't have machine learning, how would, we, how would we analyze these tweets? Does anyone have any ideas? Let's say no coding at all, we just have the tweets. Uh, pay people to look at them and categorize them by hand. Exactly, which is, which is quite boring, time consuming, and probably impossible, right? There's thousands of tweets, you can't have an army of people reading all the tweets and deciding whether it's relevant or not. So when we have coding, but not machine learning, what do we do? Exactly, so you can write, you can say, if the tweet includes this word, then it's relevant. If it includes that word, it's probably not relevant. But we're not that good. <laughs> Even if you find someone who's look, looked at lots of tweets, the person would probably not be not know all the words that are relevant and not, like, not be able to write a good model to, to predict each tweet in a relevant manner. So we use machine learning and we give all this data to our model so that the model learns from thousands of different tweets which tweets are likely to be relevant. The, the main process that we go through when we're working on a machine learning project is, first of all, we find the data set. Um, secondly, we look at our data, we try to understand what's going on. Then we clean it up so there are certain things that will mislead your model and you want to get rid of those. Um, then we would typically um, tokenize. In, in, in this example, tokenization would be dividing tweets into a list of words. Then we embed, which is turning words into numbers, because words don't mean much to your model, right? Your model needs numbers to work with. And then you choose how you're going to classify your data. And in the end, you decide what's, what's important for you and how you're going to evaluate how well your model is doing. So in this case, we'll first clean and normalize our data by removing things like tags or links, which, you know, don't tell us much. Um, then we'll embed our data, and embedding kind of looks like this, like if you have the word help, and it's present in tweet one, it's just a value of one, and if it's not present, it's a value of zero. Um, and it, it, it turns your data into something like this, something you can, you can visualize, something your model can understand and you can visualize using um, some visual representation. And then you need to choose the right classifier. So there's, there's different class, various different classifiers. If you use the logistic regression model, for example, the line would be a straight line. 
Um, so if, if the blue dots are relevant here and orange ones are not relevant, the, your, your classifier would just draw this straight line and say, all right, it seems like it, anything that falls above this line is irrelevant and anything that falls below is relevant. And as you can see, there's, there's a mix of both on both sides, right? So it's, not, it's, not the, it's perhaps not the best way of doing it, but it's one way of doing it. Um, and if you use another classifier, you might get a curve which you know, potentially uh, classifies your data better because it looks like there's you know, lots of blue, lines, blue dots here that you don't want to miss out on as uh, relevant. And then there is various things you can consider to evaluate your model. So do you want your model to be precise? Um, if, if your model is precise, then the tweets you predicted as relevant are actually relevant. And this is important in case you want to minimize the number of times the police goes to respond to a disaster, let's say. That, that, that is not actually a disaster. Um, and you can also consider recall, which is your model classifying all actual relevant tweets as relevant. And this might be a better measure if you're dealing with a, I don't know, health-related health project. You might want to make sure that if someone had a, has a disease, you definitely you know, you definitely want to identify everyone with a disease as having disease. You don't mind if there's a couple of people there that you identified as having a disease, but then they don't have a disease. I mean, it's problematic as well, but you really want to make sure you're treating people with the disease, right? So, like, that's your priority. Cool. Does everyone have the code on their laptops? Yeah? Okay. So, we're going to start with acquiring the data. Um, If you could go to that link and just search for disasters on social media, that's the data set. You can download it as CSV. Oh, I see. I've already done that. So I'm going to start with exploring the data. First thing is I'm going to import the pandas library, which is very useful for um, <coughs> working with data. It will turn my CSV into a data frame with the read CSV function. And then I'm going to start looking at the shape of my data frame. Uh, okay, I have a backup. I don't know what just happened. So I'm importing pandas, reading the CSV file, and then I want to check what the shape of my data frame is. I can see that it's about 10,000 rows and 13 columns. Um, I can do data frame dot head to see first 50 entries and try to get a feel for my data. And then you can also check the last 50 entries and you can obviously change this number to see as many entries as you like. Um, but because, because my screen is too small, I don't really get what's happening here. So for me, you know, the priority is knowing what kind of data I have. So if you do data frame that columns, sorry, um, you'll see a list of the columns in your data frame. So unit ID, golden, unit state. Um, if my screen was bigger, like on another ID, I can actually see the values in these columns. I mean, you can also do like input, input file dot, um, let's say if I want to check out text, what text is. Looks like they're tweets, right? So I know that's the relevant column. And you can, you can check the, the other columns to see what they actually are. So I know that text and, sorry, uh, sorry, this is text. So I know that text and choose one columns are relevant for me because text includes the tweets and choose one includes the label. So, so this is um, supervised machine learning, which means that someone actually did have to read these tweets and manually classify them as, label them as relevant or non-relevant or can't decide. Um, and, and this is usually a trade-off you make when you're working with, a, with machine learning. Like you need to decide whether working on 
producing an unsupervised machine learning model is faster than someone actually going through and labeling those tweets, um, and then using supervised, a supervised machine learning model um, to make your analysis faster, and then that model can apply to other tweets that, you, that no one has labeled yet. So I know that text includes the tweets, but I'm not, I, I want to make sure I know all the unique values in the choose one column. So you can do this by saying data frame dot dot column dot unique. And this tells me that there are three unique values in that column. Someone has labeled these tweets as relevant, not, not relevant, or can't decide. You need to think about, so in this case, I'm going to drop all tweets that are not labeled as relevant or not relevant. So can't decide, I'm just going to ignore. I think for this project, it's fine. But if you're working on other projects, you need to decide on the implications of ignoring <laughs> a chunk of your data, right? That might actually be a really bad decision and can give you a very biased model. So, oh, why is this good? So I don't want a big data frame, so I'm just going to limit my data frame to two columns, text and choose one, which is the tweet and the label. And then I want to make sure that I'm turning relevant and not relevant into numbers. So this, this, this line of code just turns relevant into one, all relevant values into one, and all non-relevant values into zero. And then I'm just renaming choose one to label, so it makes more sense. Then I want to convert the label column into numeric values, which will replace, which will leave ones and zeros intact, and then any text, in this case it's can't decide, will, will be nan, and then I just drop all nas. So now, if I check this, I should just see two entries, right? Before we saw three, but now can't decide should be dropped. I changed the name. So input file dot label dot unique. I just see ones and zeros. No text and can't decide has been dropped. The next step is cleaning up your data a little bit or further. Um, to make sure that your model can be more accurate. So in this case, I use regex to drop certain, certain <coughs> values. I don't want any links, I don't want special characters, and I want to turn all, um, all, all letters into lowercase so that, I don't know, like um, disaster with a, with a small d and disaster with a large d are the same thing. And then if you, if you actually check the first 50 entries, again, this won't be meaningful on this ID. Sorry, I was planning on doing some Kaggle. Um, but if you check the first 50 entries, you should actually see the differences now that you've cleaned up your data set. <coughs> Is everyone okay so far? Any questions? Feel free to jump in, correct me, or <laughs> ask any questions. All right, the next step will be tokenization. So our data set is made up of tweets and their labels, which are ones and zeros. But it's difficult to analyze. You need to decide on your unit of analysis. It's difficult to analyze whole sentences because there's so much going on, right? So what we want to do is we want to break up those sentences into words. And here I'm creating a new column called tokens, which will apply the tokenizer. Um, and if I check my data frame, I can, I cannot see that. <laughs> but if, like, if you could visualize it, you'd see that on the actually input file dot tokens. This is the third column. You'll see that each tweet corresponds to a list of. Um, unique words, or not unique, of, of words. So the next thing I want to do is I want to understand, like get more insight into the, into the data of, in, the, in the tokens column. So I create, I put all words into a list, um, and I use that to get, I use the tokens column again to get an idea of what the sentence lengths are. 
and by turning the list into a set, I can actually get a list of vocabulary. A, a set. So I can get I can get an idea of what the vocabulary included in these tweets are. So this will give me a list of unique words, not list in Python, but um, so let's check. We have 150k words in total with a vocabulary size of about 18k. And then if we check sentence lengths, it looks like the maximum sentence length is 34 words, which makes sense given that we're analyzing tweets, right? We're not expecting essays, they're usually short. So the, why is this kind of work important? It's important because sometimes you screw things up and you don't know, but by looking at this, like if I saw that the maximum sentence length was like a thousand, then I'd be like, wait, what's going on? I, I must have done something wrong, right? These are tweets. So now that we've tokenized, next step will be embedding. Um, you import, so one thing is like, there are all these libraries that are available in Python, so you don't have to write any complicated code. It's actually quite easy for any, well, I think if you know a little bit about machine learning, it's quite easy to do on, in, in Python because the libraries are there, so you just need to know which functions to use. Uh, that leads to different kinds of problems, like people doing things that don't make sense because maybe they don't have the theory behind it. But you know, try a few things for your personal projects, see what works, and then and then you can study the theory later. Like I think, if you understand the power of machine learning, then you'll have an interest in studying the theory behind it as well. But a lot of the time, people think it's this like super complicated thing that only people with specialized training can do, and it's really not. So for the embedding, I'm using the sklearn library. Um, and I'm just going to whisk through this. But remember, when we did the embedding, the, the next step for us was to choose a classifier. Sorry, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to, rewind and talk a bit about embedding. So there's different kinds of embedding that you can, you can do. Um, the basic type is bag of words, which basically um, just focuses on th the number of times uh, specific words appear in relevant tweets. Um, but this is sometimes problematic because words like the, and, you know, he, she um, appear a lot and your <coughs> model might think those are actually words that that are predictors, um, and they're not. So there is something called TFIDF. Uh, term frequency in we're talking frequency, thanks. Um, which actually takes care of that. So if there are words that appear in almost all tweets, um, then then your model just ignores those because they're they're detected as being like irrelevant. And then there are other ones. There's word to vec, which tries to capture semantic meaning. So this is, I just used one here just as an example, but there are many different ones you can use. Um, and you just need to, what most people do is, you know, A, either they think about their project and they try to figure out what makes sense, or B, they try a few things and like see what works best and then they just, they just go with that. So now that we have our embedding, next step will be choosing a classifier. In this case, I chose to use a logistic regression for two reasons. First of all, our dependent variable is binary. So we, we're classifying tweets as relevant or not relevant. So we just have two options, right? So logistic model is well fit for those. And the second reason is um, it's simple and I when I do my analysis, I always start with a simple model, get a feeling for the data, and then think about whether whether more complicated models are a better fit. So again, you use the sklearn library. Um, choose logistic regression, plug in your data, and then this is it. The next step for you will be to evaluate whether your model is doing a good job. Actually, I just realized one thing I forgot to mention was that it, this is very important for machine learning. So what we did above 
here in the embedding bit is um, we split our data into test and train. So that CSV file that we, that we imported, we don't want to use the whole thing to train our model. What we do is we split it. In this case, I chose to use 80% for uh, training and then 20% for testing. So big chunk of your data, you use it to train your model. But then when you want to test your model, you want to make sure that you're using data that your model has never seen before. So you use that 20% that your model like, doesn't know about, right? You give it the tweets. You let your model predict whether the tweets are relevant or not. Then you compare it. You already labeled those, right? So then you compare it to the labels, and that's how you calculate whether your model is doing a good job. So here I decided to um, check precision. And turns out my current model has 78% precision, which is not great. Um, so in this case, I would go back and first of all, clean up my input data a little more. I, I, you know, I didn't do too much, too much work on it. There are, I know actually that if I print vocabulary, you see, I, I, I get all these numbers. And this is just meaningless data. So this shows me that I can actually, um, I can do a better job of cleaning the data. Um, and then as I said, you can, you can choose a different, different um, embedding, a different classifier. We saw on this graph that logistic regression is this green line, right? So there's lots of blues here that I'm identifying as irrelevant. So I can choose a different classifier and um, and do better on my precision. Any questions? Yes? Um, do you have the ability to return the X frame X, test, Y frame, and Y test? So what are the X and Y's of the, your, um, the client yeah. the precision and X prediction? Yeah, good question. So how do you do that? So, So whenever you create a model, there is, you know, there's a graph associated with it, which means there's also a formula associated with it. Um, and for a logistic regression, it looks like this, right? So there, there is your dependent variable, which is y, which is relevant or irrelevant. But then you also have a bunch of independent variables, so a bunch of things, a bunch of predictors. And those are usually referred to as your x's. And then you, know, you choose how much weight to give to each x to predict whether your model, is, whether, your, whether the tweet is relevant or irrelevant. Thanks. Um, it depends on your learning style. For me, I can never just find the book and read it from cover to cover. So I try to identify concepts that I'm not sure about and just Google those. That's, for me, that's the fastest way to learn. Just Google things that I know I should learn. How do you use these techniques in your day job? Good question, no. <laughs> at, at JP Morgan, I, I write backend in Python. Um, I use the pandas and NumPy libraries a lot, but I don't do data science. But I've done it before JP Morgan. <laughs> Thanks right. for your time, everyone. Thank you very much.